What is up, everybody? Brian Zach here from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, got a song today, original song by a good friend of mine named Justin Mather. Uh, I know Justin from living in Las Vegas. Justin still lives there. Uh, he and I have collaborated on uh, numerous occasions, uh, playing in various cover bands, and um, I've been involved with playing his original music on drums for a few years now, basically since we met. Um, he's been building his studio up, and I've been building my studio up, and now, even though we live in totally different parts of the country, um, Thanks to the internet and today's technology, he can, uh, you know, send me tracks to play on, and I can send them back to him, and um, we can have a, a wonderful time working together this way. And so this has uh, been an ongoing kind of process, and this is common uh, in the music industry now. This is how a lot of uh, records and a lot of um, just recordings in general are made, sending files back and forth. Um, so, um, Justin wrote a song, it's called Meet Someone Like You. It's kind of a, um, kind of a James Taylor-ish, kind of a singer-songwriter-y, very mellow, um, you know, uh, composition. Um, it required, uh, certainly a, a degree of sensitivity to play on the drums and to just let the song speak for itself and to for you know it requires me to stay out of the way but yet of course add some color and some maybe some uh forward motion to it and, and you know anything that i can bring really to to um help the help the song along and tell its story so um this one goes back to uh actually 2017 um i looked it up i had to look it up <laughs> november of 2017 is when i recorded this for justin um and i took the video of me tracking it um not really knowing what if anything would come of it but um here here i am <laughs> talking about it and uh creating this video so um I uh, just I've been going back and just looking at some old files and just seeing what I have and seeing what I can present you as a uh, as a YouTube subscriber. And please, if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. Uh, give the video a like if you like any of my content, and um, that you know that helps out greatly. So um, here's the chart I wrote. It's a it's a Nashville numbers chart. Um, so you can see the various sections, I for intro, V for verse, CH for chorus, TA for turnaround, verse, chorus, out, I believe it looks like. Yes, outro. Um, and each number delineates, um, well, not each number, but for the most part, numbers by themselves like this denote one bar of music. So a one, a five, a one, a five. It's backwards right now. Yeah, those are fives. Okay, good. <laughs> um, these type of bars, they, uh, so this is one beat each. You'll see a dot above a number, and one, two, three, four. There's, so there's four of them there, and that's, so there's, you know, two, three, four, five with an underline. So the underline tells me that that is one bar in that the dot tells me that it is one one beat within that bar. Now, for instance, you look down here, here's a, this is a two minor to a three minor, and you see it's three dots and then another dot. So three dots under the two minor, so that's one, beats one, two, and three, and beat four for the three minor, all underlined. So that's kind of how it works, Nashville number system. That's in a nutshell. Really easy system. Um, when I first learned this system, it's like, I was like, where has this been my whole life? Because this would have made things a lot easier years and years ago. 
Um, as you can see, you can fit a whole entire song on just one sheet of music. Um, no page turns. Um, and of course, uh, for you, um, you know, guitar players, bass players, piano players, um, anyone that's playing pitched instruments, unlike myself who's playing the drums, you can transpose it. So like, let's see, let's say we, we started it in the key of G. Um, so, you know, it would be two, three, four, five in the key of G, which would be A, B, C, D. But let's say we wanted to change it to E. Well, I don't have to change anything on the chart. We're just now in the key of E. So we'll play two, three, four, five in the key of E. So that would be F sharp, G, A, B. So nothing changes on the music. So that's a huge, huge benefit for knowing the Nashville number system and being able to write out songs in the Nashville number system. So when a singer comes in and says, oh, the key is too high for me, um, we just knock it down, you know, knock it down a step or whatever it needs to be. So uh, very, very clever. Um, anyway, th this is not meant to be about the Nashville number system. <laughs> I'm just in love with it. So I, I like to share it with people because I wish somebody had shared it with me. Um, after all, you know, after all the music school that I've been through and, uh, you know, here I am, you know, 20 some odd years into my professional career. And uh, I finally, you know, came across this. It took, it took me moving to Nashville to, you know, to, to, to know about this and to, to learn it and to make sense of it all. Because really outside of Nashville, I don't think it's really taught or even taken seriously. I can tell you it's not taken seriously in music schools, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. So if you're a music theory professor or if you teach music of any kind, whether it's a high school or at a college or a university, familiarize yourself with the natural number system, especially for your rhythm section players, and teach this to your students. It's really, really helpful. Okay, enough with the rant on the natural number system. Uh, so this is Meet Someone Like You. Now, um, let's talk about what I did on this song. The song starts out with me playing brushes, kind of a light, swishy pattern. Kind of a thing. Almost a little bit reggae. Almost. not, But not reggae. It's a little bit country too a little bit you know almost like a train beat but not a full train beat it's it's leaving holes and gaps okay um the snare drum that i played on this is um an old round badge gretch field drum it's a mahogany very thin i think it's a th like a three ply mahogany um 14 by I want to say a 12. I'm not sure. Um, and, excuse me, and really, so it's really deep. It's got this really thud sound. And I've got it tuned and muted with like toilet paper that's like gaffed on there. So it's really just like thud. When you hit it with a stick, it's just like thud. Real Steve Jordan kind of thing. Um, it's it's my go-to snare. I, you know what? I, I use it a lot on a lot of sessions. It's just really, you know, it just kind of works with a lot of different songs, especially kind of like this that are kind of like low key, that I just won't need a, like a big thump for a backbeat two and four. Um, and not that the song has a big backbeat at all because it doesn't, but it just happened to work on this song uh, when I tried it. So um, I am taking sort of a page out of the Steve Jordan book in that regard. Um, at some point, um, I believe it's in the second verse. I think it goes to, I switch over to sticks. Um, and again, playing light. That's key here, because like, there's a certain tone that you get when you play light versus when you play you know, harder. I don't want a big thuddy, like, um, you know, slap kind of sound. I want more of a, a lighter touch. I'm looking for tone. 
especially in the, you know you'll see me I'm playing the hat really light um, so yeah um, the kit the rest of the kit is a recording custom I don't even touch the toms um, in, in fact in the session file I went back and I had the toms both muted when I sent the files because I didn't even touch them so they don't need to be there but um, but they look nice. There's you know recording customs. The, the kick is a recording custom, uh, 22 inch with a you know damped with a pillow um, inside of it. So um, yeah. Um, oh, and the other thing is like I use make use of a um, a cymbal rattler that's on the one crash that I'm hitting. It's a that's in the 19 inch crash. That's my favorite crash cymbal. Istanbul Agop, 19 inch, traditional medium crash. It's like my favorite crash sound. Um, so I put that rattler on there and just to give it some sustain when I hit it. And again, color, right? We're going for colors here. So the brushes add the color, the thumpiness of that snare drum. We got the, you know, the swishiness of the, of the brush and then the thumpiness. And then the color of the, of the rattler on the cymbal and then just kind of a dead kick sound as well. So um, all in all, that's that's the track. Uh, pretty simple, you know, no no chops, no flashiness. You know, this is all in a day's work, being a, a musical drummer. What a concept, right? No gospel chops here. Not that there's anything wrong with that when it's required, only when it's required. So um, here it is, Meet Someone Like You. We've had a pretty good run When life keeps throwing us a curveball Sometimes it makes us strong Sometimes we bite Sometimes we fall mm -hmm. I don't want to go Ain't got enough to know I get restless too But I know I'll never meet someone like you I get restless too But I know I'll never meet someone like you We've had some pretty good friends Who quit for the good part Sometimes it makes them new Sometimes they rise Sometimes they fall mm -hmm. I don't want to go Ain't got enough to know I get restless too But I know I'll never meet someone like you I get restless too But I know I'll never meet someone like you I get restless too But I know I'll never